Hello, everybody, and welcome back to United We Stand, Divided We Podcast. I am Robert from the good old US of A, and with us we have, of course, Lionel from Mother Canada. Mother Canada. I don't know if we ever call it Mother Canada, but They're it kind is. Of motherland. So, you know, I just kind of threw that in. Well, yeah, okay. Uh, except I thought that was <laughs> Russia. <laughs> but yes, <laughs> yeah. I am from, oh, I am look, from the Toronto region that. of Canada. <laughs> and I, I guess I did say Canada because that's how Americans <laughs> pronounce Canada. But uh, it's always good fun. I don't know how to say Nashville properly with a Nashvillean accent either. So yeah, Nashville. Yeah, I don't see. I don't. <laughs> I don't. I don't do the country twang either. So uh, you no, know, no. But, but 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 you know what? Native Nashville isn't really a country twang. It's a Nashville thing. Uh, yeah, I you'd listen. Be surprised to, how much twang is around here. I, well, yeah. I mean, in comparison to where where there is no twang, yes. But if you compare it to I don't know what Alabama. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, you're thinking about it for a second, but you know I'm right. Oh, yeah, it gets uh, worse because you get some of those other couple southern states there. But. Okay, now you know what city I live in, so let's hear an American say the name of my city. Go ahead. Toronto? Uh-uh. If you ever come here and you want people to know you're a tourist, you call it Toronto. If you just want to, you know, wander around and hope that no one thinks you're a tourist, then you say Toronto. No, you don't Toronto. say that. You say Toronto. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. People say that all the time, but it's Toronto. Notice I didn't say Toronto. I said Toronto. Uh, it sounds it, like Toronto, no, but you're saying the T, but it's so soft that it sounds like Toronto. Right. It's kind of <laughs> like um, in Kentucky, the city of Louisville. It's pronounced Louisville, but it's spelled like Louisville. And so you have people like come that. in from out of town. They go, where's Louisville, Kentucky? I'm like, Louisville, Kentucky? Oh, you mean Louisville. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, yeah, but, but that's that's common because Louis is actually uh, an anglicized pronunciation of Louis. If you look at yeah, it, Nobody spelled, pronounces it like that here. Nobody. Right? Well, I... Yeah, but Louisville, it's, I, I, I know that, but that's where it comes from. Because Ville is French for, uh, oh, shit, I was going to say French for town, but what is it French for? Is it no idea. house, I home, or French. something like that? I can't remember. I don't speak French. <laughs> I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, we wouldn't get into that. That's an interesting story about how all the relations between Canada and United States, or what would be Canada and United States. But anyways, um our first topic we should talk about is internet access. I'm sorry, I got to look down at my notes. It's been a rough week. Yeah, I put on my old man face again, which I always like to call it publicly. <laughs> internet access uh, in the States, well, I guess what do you call it? Broadband disparity. Um, you want to explain what we mean by broadband disparity? Well, you know, one of the things that uh, Lionel and I always talk about, because um, we also do some gaming and the different speeds and latencies, and uh, we, we deal with different, um, you know, packet loss problems and whatnot. And so we just kind of got, we're in a discussion one day talking about the differences and uh, we thought it'd be a good subject to, to cover here. Um, I actually did a little research and I'm, I, I found some things that, were a little surprising to me, but um, I guess maybe they might not be as surprising to you uh, as <laughs> to some of the differences between the broadband here and the broadband there. Well, um, some of the things might be surprising, but I'm not sure exactly which one you want to bring up first. Um, I, I will say that uh, in some areas, Canada is just now catching up to some of the things that have been around for a few years in the U.S. Uh, but at the same time, it's a little bit more common to have uh, higher internet speeds, although albeit at a higher price, um, in more places in Canada per capita than in the U.S. But there's also a ton of reasons for that, though. Um, if we want to talk about uh, urban centers only, then it, it's pretty even across the board in most places. Uh, except where in certain cities or regions in the U.S. and some states where service might be a little more limited to a couple of the big three or four. How many big ones do you have now? Is it down to two or you still have four or five huge companies in most of the country? Oh, no, I mean, there's several. And each each region will have its own kind of 
well, specific yeah. carrier, but you know, you have the nationwide like charter, which I guess is Spectrum now because they got bought out by Spectrum, Comcast, okay. um, you know, AT and T, Verizon, FiOS, um, right? And it's obviously going to be a lot of places like like uh, in, you know parts of Arizona, for instance, in New Mexico, where fiber optic is just not happening because you know you might come across 60 homes in 60 miles where yeah. where it's just not a thing. So they have telephone lines, but they're not going to lay fiber optic or wire fiber optic out there. Um, of course, which is, you know, Google's running their fiber um, in, you know, across the states. It's They've really slowed down in their implementation, but they're still implementing. Matter of fact, there's some new areas that just came live in Nashville. Well, the thing about Google having to do that is because they've had, there's only two ways they can do it. One is either... Uh, completely put up the infrastructure on land that they either lease or buy uh, on on uh, towers that they lease or purchase, uh, which has got to be in space that they have to either lease or purchase again, right? But a lot of it is dependent on uh, systems that already exist. Um, and I can't remember the right term for it, so forgive me. I probably should have Googled that before I came on, but um, when a, a the telephone company, for instance, when they started putting telephone poles uh, in back lanes on the front streets, but a lot of them ended up skirting people's yards. And I can't remember the right term for that, but a lot of people have fought over that in both the U.S. and Canada in some cases over why do I have to allow this? And it's usually written into the municipal bylaws, you know, decades ago. And in some cases, oh, even yeah. over 100 years ago. And there's nothing you can do about it. You buy a home that has a pole on it, you're, that pole's staying there until the company decides they don't want it anymore, which is not likely. Um, I don't even remember what the heck I was bringing that up for because yeah, I was going on two different things at the same time. Uh, so let's go back to the last thing we were talking about, and hopefully I can remember it. <laughs> I know it's one of well, those. We were days. talking about availability and 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 you know the different carriers. You asked me about the different carriers. Um, one of the things when I was kind of looking into some of these availability aspects that I think Canada and the U S kind of suffer from the same major rural disparity, yes, which is yes. where, you know, um, Starlink, you know, the Elon Musk internet, you know, Amazon has actually been approved to start mass testing their satellite based internet. So you're going to have Amazon ISP, you know, that's, satellite based um is trying to you know correct that whole rural area now i assume um it is starlink right the the elon yes. musk yes, yeah that's correct. I, I assume that's available in canada is it not because i mean that's like a worldwide it is, you know, no, it is like, absolutely yeah it's, it's yeah it's uh he made it available i mean the man basically works a lot faster in getting his 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 approvals <laughs> than google does <laughs> Right. Yeah. He, he basically said, I've got to put Starlink up, and two years after I have the testing done, it'll be available in Canada as well. And we're like, yeah, sure it will, buddy. And it was. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, yeah. So and it's been here for a couple of years. I've already. had people that use it. They, it's, it's fast and stable. Um, so, I mean, it's Well, surprising. your idea of fast is what? In Canada, I read, I read what their Starlink, I think it was like 100 and some megabits per second. Uh, up and 30 or something down. I'm like, or the other way around, sorry. Um and to me, that's not fast. Uh, to yeah, me, when you're talking about satellites. Me, I know, I get it. I mean, because internet on satellite 20 years ago, which was actually possible through Bell Express View in Canada or, uh, oh my God, what was it called? Your big satellite provider down south. Um, well, not down south to you, but. Well, it used <laughs> to be direct TV. But, yes, direct. Um, thank you. Direct. AT&T bought them out. So it's, that's why yeah. the AT&T. Yeah, no, now. I was thinking of direct TV because uh, direct TV and. Bell Express, we use the same equipment and the same, uh, the same technology. Um, so what I was, uh, what I was going to say there was a, it, it's, um, uh, oh my goodness, my brain is really not working today. <laughs> they did use the same technology. So that's why I was saying it was the same, but um, I literally am forgetting what I was going to say. Again. Well, there's a, there was another <laughs> major, a major provider of cell, of cellular, of satellite service called HughesNet. And I think they're still I've heard around. Of that. I never, yeah. I've, you know, not, I've known a couple of people that's used it and it, and of course this has been many years that I've experienced it, but it was, 
I, I would rather use dial up, honestly, because the latency was like, oh my god, so bad. Listen, that's what I that's what I remember. Alan. That's what I was going to say is that back in the day, you had the direct uh, whatever it's called, uh, or or Bell Express you in Canada, and you could get an internet service off the satellite, but it was ridiculous. And as you said, I literally realized very quickly that it was much easier to turn on my 56k modem <laughs> yeah and, really and it was it. it was so expensive it was insane like yeah it's just, meanwhile my 56k paying... modem was uh who can give me free internet for an hour and i'll just switch to the other free one for an hour after that <laughs> yeah. i'll have to watch a couple yeah. of commercials so what but <laughs> yeah. yeah um the thing about um that's working and i know that rogers is doing this i'm pretty sure they're not going to be the only ones as bell and telus around across the country if they haven't started offering this, I'm sure they will very soon. Uh, they have a 5G service, uh, which they just basically advertise blanket. But they really should focus on rural places where they actually do have uh, cellular service. But I think the problem is, is that they launched a 5G mobile, ser- or mobile in- home internet service. And they don't have 5G everywhere yet. They're still about probably two years away from getting every last corner done. But the vast majority of the rural areas in Canada are already covered by 5G. So there are communities that are as little as three houses and two farms. They have they have internet, they have 5G. Pardon me? What are the 4G speeds there? Uh, Actually, to be honest with you, if if you're in rural Canada, your 4G speeds are probably faster than your 5G speeds. Well, almost yeah, assuredly, sure. um, but in, there are there are places in the middle of Ontario uh, where you can get no service and go ten feet and get one hundred and twenty five megabits per second down. So, mm. if you got if you got yeah. your four G, you're likely going to get at least fifty or sixty. I mean, they're not going to be gaming and streaming movies on three different TV screens at the same time off of one internet thing. But the bottom line is, it's is usable. It, about yeah it is but you know i mean there's other options too because you have all these bundled services and every time you add a phone to the line you get another uh eight five ten thirty fifty or even a hundred gigs per phone sometimes depending on what you're paying for your family if you got three or four kids and you give each one of them a phone and they all have 50 gigabytes each or 20 even 20 gigabytes each you and mom have 100 gigabytes each yeah it starts to add up now you decide okay well can I add my my 5G internet thing to the same plan? Well, I don't know, but right not maybe not right now, but maybe they will in the future. That's got 500 gigabytes on it. It's not a lot, you know. When you're talking yeah. about TV, you know, stuff like that, that goes pretty quick. Um, but if you have that, oh. if you're going to if you're going to stream on, on it all the time, you know, listening to music, watching movies and stuff. But if you add that to all your phone plans, then that becomes a thing. And you're not really going to have to worry about the speed as much because every one of them has its own actual connection. They're separate. So they're not slowing each other down. Right. Yeah. Now, I, 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 I used the Verizon. Um, I think I told you. Well, you, you know, I did. I used that Verizon 5G home internet uh, to test it out. They gave you 30 days for free. So I, I used it. Uh, for 30 days actually wasn't bad i was i was actually impressed um it's it maintained a pretty stable 350 down and like 50 up um but the latency (laughs) was much higher how much Mm -hmm. what was the latency like on that one there were some times it was like 20 30 milliseconds that's not that bad i mean it's not great for gaming but it's not that bad I mean, if you're just watching a movie and surfing the internet, it's not bad. No, but in the gaming, I noticed it caused a lot of stuttering on my. Well, yeah, in gaming, it's not good. You want your you want you want your stuff to be under twenty, for sure. And if you can get fifteen, ten, even five or less, even better. Um, I'm on fiber optic, and I think the highest I ever get is six milliseconds. So. Yeah, I mean, okay. I'm on fiber, so if I'm connected through my main box that's connected to the modem, I'm you know six, seven, eight in those in that range. Right. Yeah, and it's, it's it's fast. Yeah, and it works perfectly fine. Uh, oddly, even though your latency might be slightly higher, 
I seem to die more in water, modern warfare right beside you. <laughs> it's like they know I'm Canadian and they shoot at me. Um, I, <laughs> well, you do have the Canadian flag on your banner, so they do you're <laughs> broadcasting that you're Canadian. I, we're new, yeah, they're the friend. They're the friendlier guys in real life, and everybody wants to say <laughs> hi to the guy, you know, with a Canadian flag on his shoulder. But in the in the modern warfare, now they're like, nah, look at this guy, get get him. <laughs> yeah, quickly. Do both of your fiber um, ISPs have multi gig plans where you where you live in? Toronto. I'm sorry, did you <laughs> reword the first part of that again? Your ISPs, you have Rogers and somebody else that Rod, Rogers, do they Rogers all have is, multi-gig speeds where you live? Uh, well, yes, but but uh, Rogers is, is a cable company. So the only fiber they have is to the node. And in oh, rare cases, I, I thought rare cases fiber to your house. they might do it to the curb, but they don't have any fibers right to your building or to your house okay. or certainly not to your modem. They don't have the capability. So you have one fiber company and one that. coax company. What's that? You have one fiber company and one coax company. That can yeah, and every, and every other company is just, uh, and um, well, this, is gonna, this is hurting me. I think I need to go see a doctor about my lack of being able to remember things. Uh, in in V no in is it MV yeah. or in V? Jesus, you know what I'm trying to say. In VM something. Yeah. It's, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, they're piggybacking off of it. So that's yeah. that's the whole that's the whole issue. So we got tons of those. I mean, it's like walking into a Seven Eleven to get a phone. It's a Seven Eleven phone. Uh, those are all Rogers, by the way. At least they used to be. I don't know who they are now. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, you know, you can get a phone. I mean, at one point, Walmart sold a Walmart branded phone, even thankfully, they gave that up. Although, honestly, if they had, I might have trusted it because if you buy something that's on branded now, you know, you could take it back without a problem in Walmart. Yeah. <laughs> but well, it's just like all these, you know, like mint and singular yeah. and all those other like nobody companies that are basically just tiny, small, little. ISP, you know, cellular companies, they're all piggybacking off of AT&T or Verizon or whatever. Yeah, except most of yours have really cool celebrities doing their commercials. <laughs> well, he does own it, so I guess <laughs> he <laughs> can do his I'm own commercials. Uh, wait a minute. Let's, Ryan let's Reynolds, be clear. yeah. 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 <laughs> but hey, he's Canadian. Yeah, he is Canadian. Yes, yes, he is. But there's another Canadian that was doing a bunch of uh, commercials. I, and now that I think about it, I think they were actually commercials for a Canadian uh, uh, company. Not not one of the MBNOs, or at least how you say it, um, but, but one of the flanker brands from one of the big companies. Um, yeah, or at know. least they used to be. They may have been bought out by one of the other ones. So there may be a flanker brand of a flanker brand of a big company. Yes, that's a thing in Canada. You can be a flanker of a flanker of a big company. Well, it's just like anyway here. They offer cellular service, but they're piggybacking off of Verizon. Yeah, who, who's that? Comcast, the coax uh, company. Big. That's who services our area for coax. I'm sorry, Comcast piggybacks. They're they're cellular. Oh, they I didn't offer cellular that. service, and I'm they sorry, piggyback I, I, off I, you of Verizon. Lost when you said Comcast and Verizon, I automatically was just thinking internet again, not the cellular. Yeah. And, and I, well, Comcast yeah, no, no, is no. a huge cable company. What are you talking about? Yeah, Comcast. Yeah, I don't no. know. Is Comcast um, uh, second biggest or third biggest or for cable? I mean, internet. they're probably the largest in they our are? area, at least. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Here's the interesting thing. You could fit all of Bell's customers, all of Rogers' customers, and all of uh, Telus's customers in Canada into Comcast, and they would still be going. That's not enough. Um, <laughs> well, we have a much smaller population. Uh, we, by the way, have officially uh, not too long ago we hit forty million people here. So, woo we finally hit forty million. <laughs> Some place you guys were in what eighteen eighty three or something like that. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're in that neighborhood. Know. Oh, maybe not actually. It might have been later than that because that wasn't that long after the war. <laughs> but, 
yeah, no telling. I, 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 I couldn't. I'd have to go back into the, you know, I'd have to go to the uh, national archives in Washington and dig through the census bureaus and <laughs> not doing or, that. Or you could just use Jim and I. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Information is publicly Maybe. available. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. So we already, we already, okay. We we touched up enough on that, I suppose. This, uh, everybody knows. Like, this, we'll just sort of summarize this. Is basically. Um, while 10 years ago, even a few years ago, it was next to impossible for anybody to get anything other than dial up out in rural areas. Most rural areas in Canada right now have access to some form of a broadband, uh, whether it be satellite Starlink, which would be the better of the satellite options, obviously. Um, and not as expensive as people think. Um, it's not terrible compared to what the old satellite internet was. Um, but, uh, they also, depending on where they are, they might very well have 5g or at least 4g cellular internet service. Uh, and then if they do have cellular service with broadband on their phone, they have the ability usually to tether that tethering in Canada, uh, with any company does not require you to flick any toggle switches, ask permission or pay extra. There is no such thing as no to tethering. Um, I don't know if they just did that as a sales thing. Or if it's written into law, uh, I've never really looked into it because I never thought I had to. Um, it's just not a thing. Uh, when people first started talking about whether they could, we were allowed to tether or not, it went away very quickly, like probably two thousand and three or four. The the subject of tethering as a, as whether you can or not was dependent on the phone you actually had in your hand, as opposed to the company that you were with. So I guess the any differences there would be in the States because it's so much more people and there's so many of them in the middle of the country, but in certain areas, it's either less livable or just less appealing to live there for a lot of people. So you've got huge swaths of places like Montana, uh, Iowa with a lot of farmland and a lot of people spread out, Nevada, New Mexico. Um, then of course, Colorado and places in the mountains where you just either aren't going to get internet or there's not enough people to warrant anything being wired. And so you may even have dead gaps in those areas of even cellular service. So I would imagine oh, yeah. that Canada might have a slight advantage in that area right now for rural uh, broadband access. Well, here, here's the crazy thing and just a couple of points and we'll move on. But um, so where I live is a fairly populated it's a little city. I mean, 35, 40,000 people. Five minutes away where uh, one of my coworkers lives, no broadband, no cable, no AT&T, nothing. Five minutes? They just, yeah, not if that, if that. It's, wow. They just live like in this like little holler, and they call it here. <laughs> But they can't get any service out there. Now, I will say um, there's been a big grant that's been given to one of the local electric companies, and they are part of what they call uh, Cumberland Connect, which is a initiative to get fiber run out into rural areas or more rural areas to where they can bring some broadband. So, um, But I thought that was just so insane because – There's literally AT&T towers out there, and you know well that there's fiber ran to those AT&T towers. You know there is. They're not Most like likely. all just connected. <clears throat> and, you know, Comcast is literally on the next road over, but they wanted like 50 grand to run a main line over to that road to supply <laughs> that street. <laughs> it's like, What? It just doesn't make absolute sense. But here's one thing that I I think maybe might be different in Canada than here as to my, um, like a resolution to that. I don't know. Is the U S doesn't really have any regulatory, uh, hands-on type control over pricing and distribution and who puts what, where, whereas, seems to based on what i was looking and researching that canada's government tends to have a little more of a hands-on approach and control over that is that 
Is that true? Do you find that to be accurate? Uh, <laughs> you mean oversight? <laughs> Whatever you want to call it. I mean, uh, to where it they really, I guess, um, the the, the providers, CRTC. Rogers. Yeah. That's, they have to abide yeah. by what the CRTC says they have to abide by. And it's right. not just that. There's other there's other bodies involved, but the CRTC basically lays down the rules uh, and says this is what you have to have. Uh, CRTC is uh, the reason why a specific amount of content has to be Canadian if broadcast in Canada. They're still trying to get them, people to do this on the internet. And it's, it's like they're not understanding the internet is the internet, not the <laughs> yeah. Canadian net. Uh, right. right. So if my content, if I want my content to all be Bangladeshi, that's my damn business. Right. Uh, right. I don't <laughs> I don't need you to tell me that I have to speak or have to watch anything that that that, that, that made in Canada when I all I want to watch is movies from Fiji. Well, do you find I'm, though that I'm that clearly helps joking with about that but still, Sorry? Do you find that that helps with implementation and no, like bringing out to new areas or it hurts? No, 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 absolutely not. It doesn't, it doesn't at all. The CRTC uh, does, isn't involved in that part of it. There's another body. I can't remember the name of it. I'd have to check that out. Oh, okay. Um, it's regulatory body, but everybody has a license to do something. And much like the, um, like the wireless spectrum auctions that we're both our countries are still having to this day. Uh, although yeah. you're almost finished with yours. Um, we still got another year or two to go before we can get the higher one. Uh, we just did the 3,500 megahertz last year and it just got doled out in the last several months. It made a huge difference on my phone instantly though, by the way, because they, they had already yeah. paid for it. They had to wait for it to actually be allowed to turn it on. And, and, uh, they flicked the switch one day and my, my, uh, mo uh, speed on my phone went up like 250 megabits per second, just like that. In certain yeah. areas, in a half a block span, but but it, but it, but it, but it did become more stable anywhere where you could get faster speeds. So even if it yeah. slowed down, it was more stable. But okay. uh, yeah, no. Well, I was just curious. I didn't yeah. know if that was a you know negative or a positive in 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 Canada. I, I didn't it, know. Well, there are there. It can be a negative because there's a lot of hoops to jump through. It, it's kind of like uh, uh, Google launching something and saying, "Well, it's." available everywhere but canada well if it <laughs> has to do with language models <laughs> yeah. large language models um it has to be approved by quebec uh, because it has to meet their standards of their language which is quebecois right it's and not to be confused with french from france or parisian yeah, and um, you were telling me about that. that it's, they're basically yeah. controlling the entire country's ability to technological input. Technically, no, they're not. <laughs> it, it, it's, like, it's easy to put it on them, but they have the right to do that because it's their language and they're preserving it, and I understand that. But the problem is, is that Google doesn't feel that it would be pertinent or prudent or whatever the right word is right now uh, to, to actually work on the app for Canadian English versus American English uh, and put it out immediately now saying uh, that French Canadian will be uh, added later when it's approved or when it's finished. Um, what they could do, however, and this is in my boggles my mind is they could just say, this is for Canada, but it's British English because uh, we use the same language as in Britain in Canada. Um, we spell things differently than you guys in some cases, right? Sometimes we put an E at the end of a word where you don't. Sometimes we, uh, pronounce things slightly differently. Uh, and it is, it is, uh, much closer to British English, but much closer to an American accent or at least a Minnesota accent as if I were from Minnesota. Have you ever been, have you ever been to Minnesota? In the absence of Minnesota, Minnesota? St. Paul? My, my my sister lived up in Wisconsin, and my kids currently Wait. live up in Wisconsin. <laughs> but I've never been to Minnesota. <laughs> that's so that's so amazing. It's like honestly, it's not like you can just cross the border between the two states and it's instantaneously changed or anything. But it is remarkable how fast you can actually hear the difference from one city to the next 
in only the, however many hours, it's five hours or four hours or whatever it takes to drive there from between one yeah. and the other. So it, it's like, and I've done it, right? So I hear people and they're saying, you go to the store and say, yeah, d- uh, do you have any, uh, you have any chocolate milk in your store or whatever? I don't know why I said chocolate milk, by the way, just, I guess I have a craving for it now. And they say, uh, yeah, you go over there and it's over there in the back, eh? Well, they don't say, hey, I yeah. just, that came out as a Canadian. I did my apologies, but uh, you drive <laughs> a couple more Minnesota, hours here, here in Wisconsin, Wisconsin. And he asked the same thing. He said, yeah, go over it in the back and it's in the back. <laughs> in the, it's in the back. <laughs> it's Wisconsin. And, and, and then it changes drastically in another 45 minutes when you get to Chicago. It's yeah. like unreal. It's like well, the, you can you can tell the difference between a New Jersey and a New York accent, oh, which is huge, crazy. huge. But there I mean, is they're, a similarity, they're, though. If they're literally notice, across like, the river. <laughs> yes, if you if you listen carefully, or if you used to know anybody from there, you can hear the difference. Uh, mm-hmm. But you can also hear the similarities between New Jersey and New York, especially those that live very close to New York, or a lot of people in the Brooklyn area that are actually close. You know, there is a similarity in it, but yet hugely different. But Mm -hmm. it's also, you know what, though? You can hear the difference between somebody who lives in northern Texas versus southern Texas. So. (laughs) Well, Texas is the size of half of Canada, so it's huge. No, 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 it is. (laughs) Please. You could fit two Texas in Ontario. Yeah. No, I didn't know that, did you? You could put two Texas. It's, it's funny though when Ontario. they talk about some of the European countries or Middle Eastern countries, and they say like, "Oh yeah, like all these countries can fit inside Texas." You're like, "What?" <laughs> yeah, what? It's crazy. You know what? You, yeah, you could put. Um, let's see, you could put France, uh, Germany, and Portugal inside of Quebec, and still fit. Probably, I'd say North Dakota. <laughs> maybe something along that line inside of the province of Quebec. All of that yeah. would go in there easily. And you'd still have several hundred square miles left over. Uh, yeah. Not quite as big in Ontario. Ontario's more spread out because it goes a little further, but but Quebec is so massive. Um, I, most people have never seen most of it. It's like that big. It's like most people, have, there's untapped wilderness in Quebec. Uh, not a lot of untapped wilderness in, in Ontario. It's just a lot of lakes and places where it gets too cold to go. Simple as that. Yeah. Well, in, that in the winter, that's a good segue is. into into the e-commerce side of things that we wanted to to. That's a segue to e-commerce because uh, you know market size obviously has a lot to do with you yeah know, yeah uh, yeah very e-commerce. true e-commerce. Yeah, <laughs> there's not a lot of e-commerce going on in Tuktoyuktut, I imagine, but um, <laughs> but. But I might be wrong. Uh, it is. It is actually a, a, in a, a town, uh, and they do have internet. So maybe there is. Maybe they have lots of people with investments. And they got e-commerce. Money. I bet you Amazon delivers out there. Uh, well, uh, if Amazon delivers out there, it's not free delivery. Uh, when you live up <laughs> north of Canada, like I don't know what it's like in Alaska. It's probably very expensive, but up north in Canada, when you get up over that. Arctic Circle region um, mm-hmm. in Northwest Territories, uh, Nunavut, and Yukon. Um, even even some communities in northern Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta, and northern Ontario, uh, it costs upwards of fifteen to twenty dollars for uh, two quarts of milk. Yeah, like uh, a pound of ground beef is like forty dollars a pound. Like you got enough for like four hamburgers, man. Are you kidding? <laughs> well, everyone's got to be airdropped. Where did they get their that. money from is what I want to know. What job are you working that you could afford a $40 hamburger with nothing on it? Okay. <laughs> yeah. but sign yeah. me up. Yeah. <laughs> if I can go there yeah, for six months funny. to make that kind of money, come back. And lie around in bed with my $40 hamburger. So yeah, happy. But um, yeah, okay. Let's move on to proper e-commerce talk. <laughs> that was a little fun. Uh, I'll let you start that one out. Well, what it surprised me is that, and I think we actually have figured this out because of some things I've shipped to you, but um, oh, yes. U.S. is far less likely to purchase from K- 
Canadian retailers because of the shipping and tariff costs. Yes. But Canadians so. will purchase more so from American companies. So I don't know if there's like like one way is cheaper than the other. I don't I don't really understand well, the whole in, tariff in that thing, respect, but I just found that to be weird that it's like you're so you're you're supposed to be like you know best friend trade partners and all that yes. and it's like it seems like it's just makes it more difficult i don't know well in 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 some ways yeah but there's a couple of different reasons and let's let's first of all let's call it what it is a lot of the reasons that a lot of americans will not buy from canada e-commerce wise is patriotism buy american it's a it's a thing uh, if you live near, oh, the border, I know, yeah, for sure. You will happily take your your money and save thirty percent on the exchange alone. Drive over the border; you've already saved more than the gas on what you want to purchase uh, from the from the difference, just from the exchange rate. But also, your money goes a lot further there, anyways, um, or here, right? So if you come here with five hundred dollars, you're you've got eight hundred and some odd dollars to spend. Like it's like it's insane. Um, or okay. 700 or something, I can't even count. Um, but it goes a long way. So it, it's a huge thing, for instance, if somebody's in Buffalo or Niagara Falls, especially, because they just go over the bridge from Niagara Falls to Niagara Falls. They spend $300 at the casino and they go home and go, oh my God, I, I just lost $100. And they say, well, how, how much did you, said, you only lost 100? I said, well, no, actually, I only lost 70, but. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah. Or, or they win. You know, and it doesn't end up being as much bad. But the thing is, is that you can, your exchange works so well that it, it makes difference. So people, uh, they might come here and buy something and then go back. But e-commerce, is, we don't really have a lot of big, huge e-commerce companies that aren't connected or to U.S. or, or a subsidiary of a U.S. company, uh, unless they're specifically meant for local. So that's one of the other reasons. That Americans I think don't. also a big part of that, and we've discovered that as well in some of the things we've done, is that the payment system is terrible across the border. And the I mean, there's so many options here, and you just don't have that many options there that are the same. So we have to find other methods of transacting, you know, cash transfers uh, yeah, yes, or whatever. Yes. Yeah, the cash it's transfers ridiculous. is a different story. And then that's, not necessarily just e-commerce, but it does make a difference because you can use most of those cash transfer services as payment services in the States, whereas we have a couple of them that can be used only for payments but not cash transfers, or they can be used for both, but you can't, like for instance, uh, in Canada, you can't uh, connect your, um, well, I mean, you can connect your, uh, oh, good, I wanted to say eBay, not eBay, what do you call it, PayPal account to the bank, but that's only for the purpose of taking money from your bank. It will not put money into your account. You have to actually request it back out. And it's not the same thing. It doesn't go into your bank. And I don't know why they can't do it. I think the, actually I do know why, sorry, because in order to be able to do that, they have to consider themselves a bank. So they have to pay a different level of insurance rates, register as a bank. If you do anything to do with credit or being able to connect to a bank, you have to be registered as a bank. So Wise is smart. Wise does do that, and they do allow it, so it can go both ways with Wise. But uh, yeah. Wise also has to, to be actually because they use a debit card. In order to use a debit card in Canada, you have to be part of the of the debit card network. Being able to connect to a bank, you have to be registered. Yeah. Card thing, uh, which can be yeah. sort of seen as a credit card or a debit card, depending on where you go or where you purchase something, plus sending money back and forth, which is, as you found out, is dirt cheap compared to everyone else. Yeah, it's just weird though that it's there's just not many options. You know, I had to go digging for options. Yeah, I found that that one company that you know we started using. Yeah, uh, well, that is it, that is the reason. It's basically because in Canada. In order to be able to do that kind of business, you have to be considered uh, or registered as a bank. So Rogers, yeah. for instance, wanted to have their own credit card uh, as opposed to just offering in-house credit. They had to, wanted to have a credit card. Well, they have to be listed as a bank. So there's Rogers Bank. Bell does the same thing, Bell Bank, 
right? Every other yeah. company, uh, all these other companies, these stupid pay payday loans, do not use payday loans. Tip of the day. Who Anyways, would do that? I, I don't know. Yeah, I say that. I, I, I say I have, that. I have, really I have no idea. There's one on that. every corner here. There's one on every corner here. I've done it, and I've gone through a bankruptcy. Uh, luckily, I came out the other side. I've got credit again. I've got a car, so on and so on. But um, it's hard. It's very difficult. You end up going to more than one payday loan so you can pay off the other, and then you go to a third one to pay off the second one to pay off the first one. It doesn't work. Stop doing it. Yeah. But nonetheless, in order for them to do that at all, they all have to be considered banks. Uh, now, because they're yeah. banks, that means they report every last thing except payday loans being sent to you. So if you take money from them, it, they don't say, oh, he took money from us. They don't report that you paid it back. They only report when you don't. So <laughs> it, it, it's an absolutely horrible thing. Um, so that that's, by the way, one thing we do have in common, except that in, in the States, they don't have to be considered a bank, I don't believe. Um, or maybe they do, but it's independent because you have an independent everything in the U.S. Okay. But well, yeah. Yeah, nonetheless, um, you have you probably even more payday loan options in the U.S. than we have here, which, in my opinion, is not a good thing. But it's it's yeah, like I said, there's something true. on every corner here. I mean, and it's it it's it's ridiculous. That, well, it know, is on every corner. Much, and you know, and oh, they, the there's way. certain laws in place that um, prevent. Um, I say high interest rate, but I mean, when you're paying 50, 60 percent, <laughs> that's a high interest rate. That's, you know. that's a high interest rate. <laughs> but I think they cap it. You know, they have at least like, oh, you can't go over that. It's, you know, it's it's right. Of, yes. I think they, they take advantage of, um, you know, a lot of people who. Well, they did you know, cap it in Canada. They did cap it. But keep in mind, if it's if, if they cap it at 35 percent, whatever it is, I'm not sure. Um, that's still thirty-five percent. You have to pay back within yeah. two weeks, unless you get a monthly salary. Then you have to pay it back in a month. So you're like, okay, I get paid um, tomorrow, so they're not going to make me pay it back until next month. So I'll borrow a thousand dollars off of my two thousand five hundred dollar check, which would be a little on the pathetic side, but nonetheless, you know what I'm saying. So then that check comes, and you owe seventeen hundred dollars for your rent, and you have to pay back. Twelve hundred dollars, sorry, fourteen hundred dollars to these people right now. What? I, how does that work? Mathematically, it doesn't add up. So what you do is you pay it back and then you borrow it immediately. You've already lost yeah. a few hundred dollars, and yeah. you've got to pay your rent. Yeah. And then when the next month comes, you got to do it again. So you lose three hundred dollars yeah. every month until you get to the point where. The payday loan doesn't work anymore, so you go to a second one. I don't know why I'm yeah. ranting about this. We, we were going on a little too long about that one. I'm very passionate about that, and I say don't. Do it. <laughs> well, no, I, I agree, and I, you know, just in talking about regulations, it was one of the things that um, I realized that. Well, what I found out through researching is apparently Canada has much higher regulation restrictions regarding consumer privacy you know the data protection online sales taxes and all those things that the u.s doesn't necessarily i mean they i think they leave it more up to the companies and the banks as opposed to a government right. oversought you know regulation you know, yeah do you it, find yeah, that your online privacy is is more protected than the u.s no Absolutely not. Um, they, they, they might say that that's the regulation for online privacy, but that makes jack squat difference between Canada and the United States about whether you're safe or not. First of all, if I decide to log into a, a website or a service that's American and not Canadian, which I can do on the internet freely right now, uh, right. Canada has no say in that. So right, there's no right. protection in that area. Now, when it comes to local things and your banks and whatnot, um, it does kind of help in some areas simply because um, most of the banks now are going with uh, the suggestions, which are not necessarily law, 
about how they have to be logged. There are some laws about it. But while everyone is up to a, a little under a year ago, we're still saying, oh, we have to have two, two and three-factor authentication. It's the only way to do it. And they're all going, oh, eventually, you're going to have to do three-factor authentication. We're not going to let you in the bank unless you do it that way. But then somebody came up with the idea and then realized, well, wait a minute. We have the ability to do security uh, with two-factor authentication where you really only have to do one thing. <laughs> Thankfully, because it was going that way. So most of the That's banks crazy. in Canada are now fingerprint and or face and pin or password backup. No big deal. You don't need any third party apps. There's no fingerprint. Uh, wow. So you would go, when you go to the bank, you have to give a fingerprint to take like a withdrawal or something. Is that what you're no, not, not in the bank. That would be cool as a hell. I would love that. Are you kidding me? <laughs> put your thumb where, down. Where do you put your I know if you walk into the bank, you have to actually stick your card in. You can't even tap it. Oh, sorry. That's not true. Uh, one of the branches I go to changed that uh, just a few months ago for the first time. You can actually tap your card now. Well, who's taking your, your fingerprint then? I'm talking about the phone on your phone or tablet. or Oh, whatever. oh, 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 oh. I thought you were talking I, about like I didn't make that clear. But because we were talking about e-commerce <laughs> and we're talking about security. And online yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So, so yeah, <laughs> right. the, the app on the phone. <laughs> hey, listen, I've been contagious, apparently. It's gone over the internet and caught you. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, so, you know, I just basically now, and not that this wasn't already a thing, but it's much more secure now when you go in because it's... uh. It's either using two-factor authentication behind the scenes, which is working. It's very perfectly working. Uh, and of course, if you use a different phone or a different tablet or a website from your computer to get into that bank or whatever, uh, you get one of those emails and a notification saying, hey, was this you? You go, yes, yeah. it was me. So on and so on. So it's, it's easy to track. Um, so I'm curious about something. Do you find the general population in Canada is very resistant to using the two factor or like, does everybody like, yeah, let's just, let's do it. This is That's great. About the, it's about the same as in the U S it's um, the tech people are like, no, I'm going to do it because I'm not, you know, I don't want to say it uh, because I, because I, I it's a smart yeah. thing to do. Um, whereas other people are like, I, I don't have time for that. Just, just help me turn yeah. this on. Yeah. And, until so watch my show. And, then, and then they'll and have time for it. it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And the thing about it, originally two-factor authentication was a bit of a pain in the butt, but technically easier than later implementations when you get, say, that Google two-factor app, if you remember that thing, and it would do its code generation stuff. But you only had to have it open. You didn't have to necessarily write down the codes. But then you could. You could save those codes and put them in a zip file and, 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 and password protect it. Well, those are those are... Those are backup codes that don't change. As yeah, to yeah, I know. But but do you see the look on my face right now? You see the flaw in that system? You lose well, your yeah. computer and you lose the codes. Uh, the other thing, too, is if somebody knows how to get into that shit, if they can hack into it, they're going to see it anyways. So it's, it was kind of like that. Nah. But luckily, they've kind of moved away from the app. And then, of course, now we have, um, uh, what do you call it now? Uh, What's this? What, I mean, it's happening to me again. The new technology that uh, that they're using, where you only have to use your face or fingerprint, or if you prefer a pen, biometrics. Whatever. Well, no, I just, he doesn't have to be biometrics, I, I, but use biometrics. But I mean, uh, the, the new system, like where, like everybody's doing, so you don't have to enter your password every time when you go to various pass sites. Keys. Pass keys. Thank you very much. Pass keys. Yes, this is a big thing, and of course, everyone's supporting it. Virtually everyone that matters is supporting it, and it's it's rolling out faster and faster. I've noticed uh, four or five new companies uh, that I've done business with in the last uh, month have uh, yeah. suddenly joined in on the passkey thing, and you know it's just going to get more and more as it gets more popular. More the apps are going to be like, yeah, let's just use passkeys. Um, and because I was already using Google Password uh, uh, app, whatever it's called, um, I basically felt like I was doing everything the right way anyways, because if I typed it in, I just had to put it in. I didn't have to remember any passwords. So I got to the point where I could put whatever I want in. But the latest one yeah. I did, um, what is it? It's Steel Series. I had deleted it and I'd forgotten the password. So I did enough and didn't know it was a Steel Series. I lied. It was, a <laughs> I'm confusing two things I had to install very recently today. Uh, I just recently bought a Bluetooth OBD2 scan tool thing for my car. 
uh, so I could clear some codes. Um, and I had to install the app. And of course, they said, well, you have to have your account thing, whatever, right? Uh, and in, immediately, uh, I went to put it in and, and, and started asking about uh, if I it had, it had a big, long thing. And it specifically said, you do not need to remember this. <laughs> Interesting. Like, good. So I hit the button. Yeah. It's good to go. And if I go check it right now, it's there. It's in, it's in, it's in my Google password thing, which I actually yeah. have to use my fingerprint pin uh, or pattern to, to get into from any device. Uh, it's impossible right. to go into it unless you know one of those three. And so there, there you have it. It's, it's extremely secure. It works the same anywhere, really. So in Canada and the States, that's the same, the same idea. There was something I think that you were interested in in knowing about seeing which country seems to have. Oh, no, that's the one you just asked me. Never mind. Strict, stricter consumer protection laws, right? Um, yeah. Honestly, I, I do think for the most part it is Canada, but uh, some states might have a few things in there that might go a little further than Canada. Um. I'm not sure. Yeah, which one. I, I don't. I don't. I mean, you know, you, you always get those boxes that pop up and say, uh, "Agree to terms and services," or you can't do this. Who reads it? Who reads Most anything about privacy? Who reads don't. about they terms just, of services? Just, yeah. Most people so, click it. I mean, and and yeah. I'm I'm blamed too because if I want to get somewhere, uh, and I know I want to get there, I know I want to go and purchase or whatever it is, I I'm going to click it. I mean, because. I can't get in there if I don't. <laughs> you know, that's I, the whole point. <laughs> that's true. But, you, in most you know. cases, you don't have a choice. Um, you, if you want the service, uh, you haven't got a choice. Uh, I think it's just I more of a CYA for the company is all it is. Well, yeah, absolutely. But, but in most cases, it's not a big deal. Like, for instance, when they talk about the privacy thing, the only thing I care about is, are they trying to sell my information? Because if they're a company that's selling the information, I don't know how interested I am in that. Um, if they're just using my information uh, as an aggregate to research, go nuts. I don't care. It's not like you're publishing my last name and my address. I, there's no way you can Google last time I ate or what store I went to. Uh, Google ain't going to tell you that. Google knows because Google Maps. Uh, my tracking is on, on my phone 24-7. So it knows where I went to the store and when I went to the store and what store I went to. But it ain't going to tell you that. And they don't sell that information. So I'm fine with that. Right. It's and and what's nice about the Google's, they give you an auto-delete feature. You can set up auto-delete in certain time frames. Yes, I have mine exactly. every, every 90 days, mine wipes out. So it's just, yeah, I have you can only see 90 days I like worth to look back at it. And also the other thing too is I, I, I do this honestly. I swear to you, no word of a lie. I've had a couple of close calls in my life. Uh, I remember when I first moved to Calgary um, and I was doing temp work and I, I basically had to get up at 4.30 every morning, walk three kilometers downtown to go line up. Back in the days when that's how you got temp jobs, you lined up, told them you were there and you waited at, the, at a table out in the lobby for anywhere from a few minutes to half the day, hoping they would say, okay, we got some place to send you. <laughs> And I was on my way the one time, and just before I left the house, I was listening, I was watching the news channel, uh, and uh, they were talking about a guy who just finished robbing somebody on the street or something like that. And they described him as uh, approximately five feet, nine inches tall, uh, black, short, curly hair, looks very uh, half black, half white. And, you know, and, and he's wearing a brown jacket, which I was wearing. I swear to God, I was so nervous walking down the street. Every time a cop went by, I went, oh, God, please don't do this to me. I didn't do this. I don't know who this guy is. But he's describing somebody that looked exactly like me. Down to the blue jeans I was wearing. I'm like, no, no. Thankfully, that didn't happen. And that very day, while I was waiting to get a job, some other guy came in and asked me if I wanted to work. I said, what do you think I'm here for? And he said, probably to work. And I said, yeah. He says, well, I can offer you a job right now. And I, my first thought was, what are you trying to ask me? Because <laughs> like, I'm not interested. <laughs> but he was legit. And I worked today. I went with him to the company. He gave me a $100 um, advance because he needed somebody to work right away. He was willing to train right from out of the gate. But he didn't want to pay for a temp. So he just yeah. offered me the job right then and there, 
we drove down to the place and he gave me the hundred dollars so I could get by for the first week. And, and, uh, and I worked there for two, almost two, two, well, I think two years before I decided to move back to, to, to Winnipeg. So oh. it was a wonderful experience, but nonetheless, <laughs> uh, anywho, um, there was one other thing I think we needed to bring up or do we have, you know, we do have to, what was it? No, well, no, that one's too deep. We no, we I mean, to... I'm, 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 I'm done. I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I, I was gonna, I was gonna bring up one thing because we're we're getting we're getting pretty close, but we can't really talk about the whole cybersecurity and data privacy thing in depth right no, now. We no, don't have no. enough time left. Um, so I guess I'll, I will just mention really quick. Uh, one of Canada's former prime ministers, Brian Mulroney, passed away last week. To be honest with you, I, I don't offhand remember the exact date. Um. But one thing about Brian Mulrooney was, at least as my memory goes, I he was like the last of those politicians that, you know, he, like every politician, he does some stuff right, he does stuff, some stuff wrong. Some people like him, some people don't like him. But he acted like a human being that you felt like you would like him outside of his office. There's not a lot of leaders in the world that have that kind of personality and persona right. or the way they do business anymore right now. No offense to Joe Biden, because he might be a really sweet dude. I don't know. But he doesn't come off as someone who would give a crap ass about you uh, standing on the street corner 10 feet away from him. And I'm yeah. not insulting the man in any way, shape, or form. But uh, he just doesn't look like it matters to him. And I don't even have to mention the other guy. I don't want to, um, but even <laughs> in Canada, the last uh, few prime ministers we've had, no, absolutely not. No, they're holier than thou and Hitler-esque are names that come to mind uh, for the last two, respectively. So that said, uh, rest in peace, Brian Mulroney, the last of the true politicians who could still be considered Someone that I would sit down to dinner with outside of your working hours. Um, Human. I actually wish I could have had the chance to meet him because uh, he was he was the last of the, of his kind in Canada. I I don't know who who's the last of your kind there, but that's a good segue. And if you want to have anything to say about your situation, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's going to be another okay. whole topic. Because <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's going to be crazy. This is a. Uh... Yeah, this election yeah. year is going to be something. <laughs> so, yes, when I was a kid, I do remember watching, I'm just a Bill, just a lonely old Bill, sitting here on Capitol Hill. I'm, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> still one of my favorites. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, Hilarious. and, you know, it confused me because I would ask, how's the bill passed? And somebody, you know, like a teacher would say, that's not for us, <laughs> and I, like, they, but they wouldn't explain it, so I didn't know. So I, for sure, I probably till I was ten years old, I actually thought that we did everything exactly the same way that you guys do, and how in how how things were done. Don't get me wrong; a lot of it is, but we'll talk about that next week. Is yeah, that, that, yeah, that'll that'll be something interesting. We can give people a little bit of insight on how, if you're Canadian, you get to learn a little bit more about how the American system works, and if you're American, we can show you or tell you. How the, how the Canadian system works. And both of them have advantages and dis disadvantages. So, yeah. with that said, I believe we can probably wrap it up for today. So, uh, let's close it out. What do you say? Let's do it. So, okay. um, thank you, everybody, for tuning in. And uh, we hope you're enjoying uh, this content. So, make sure you hit that like and subscribe and leave us any comments. And uh, we will catch you on the flip side. See you later.